refuse to believe it. I just refuse to believe it. I believe that Wyndham Rotunda is so dedicated and committed to his character, so dedicated and committed, that this is all a work. This is just him finding new creative ways to get out of child support. And I'm going to roll with that. If only I could say that. Unfortunately, the reality is not funny. It's not fun. It sucks. You know, less than 24 hours after finding out that a legend such as Terry Funk had passed away, you find out the news about Wyndham Rotunda, better known as Bray Wyatt, passing away due to a heart attack at the age of 36. 36. An active WWE contracted performer, while we hadn't seen him in a little while, mind you, passed away at the age of 36. And not surprisingly, lots of videos, seen so many wrestlers, people in the business, media, fans, you know, with an outpouring of love and affection being demonstrated towards Wyndham Rotunda, towards his kids, Jojo, Mike Rotunda, like his whole family, etc. Because this really sucks, right? And you know, there's a lot of things that suck about this. You know, the whole notion of this is all part of some big plan or like, no. If you think this is part of any good plan, you're crazy. Like there is nothing good about this. There's no master plan at work here. You have, what is it, three or four kids now have to grow up without their dad. That's dumb. And you should be okay with saying, that's dumb. Because sometimes life is dumb. Life makes absolutely no sense. And in this case, that's absolutely true. For a guy in the peak of his life, the peak of his career, in his mid-30s, to get COVID, then get some, reportedly, according to Sean Ross Sapp, get COVID, have some side effects of that, that exacerbated uh, existing cardiac condition, and then it leads to this man at age 36 passing away due to a heart attack. Yeah, that, there's no justification you could put on that. Prayer's my ass. Like that sucks because life sucks. Life is cold and cruel. Like imagine that. These kids are going to have to live the rest of their lives without their dad. JoJo's going to have to go on without the love of her life. His dad's going to have to bury his son. No parent ever wants to bury their child. Like, how does anybody possibly benefit from this? This is a cruel, sick, twisted, freaking world. And I think about it myself at 42, like... Every day you get older, you think a little bit more about the life that you've lost, you know, that's in the past. And you think about how much do you have left, right? And you think about, you know, everybody's got a defined time. We might not know what the answer is, but it's kind of sobering to me when I see somebody that's so young. Like, this guy's six years younger than me, right? If I put it in greater context... That means when I would have been a senior in high school, this guy would have been in like sixth, seventh grade. Now he's dead. And I don't mean that to sound crass. Like I, I mean that to say like how precious life really is and how uncertain life really is. We've all got three things associated with our lives ultimately. You've got one number, a dash, and another number. The first number is the date you're born. The second number is the date you ultimately die. And your life is truly defined by that dash. And some of us do a better job of maximizing that dash. And I will give it to Wyndham Rotunda. This dude lived his life. This dude maximized that dash. When you think about getting into the family business, this is going back to the days of FCW and being stuck with that horrendous, 
Husky Harris gimmick that was never going to go anywhere to be able to come back and help create and kind of form and evolve the Bray Wyatt character first down in the FCW type of level and then at the main roster level and to sit there and you know be able to like continue to change it and evolve it in a way that not a lot of performers can like it was a testament to his mind for the business his feel for the business his understanding of the business his confidence in himself like he made the most out of it and you know he took chances and he gambled on himself and you saw that with the Firefly Funhouse and so forth. Like he took this stuff in an entirely different direction. And, you know, you even think about last year when he made his return. And even though that didn't seem to go as well, but you could still, then you could sense the people really appreciated a fact for a guy that was different in a business that's so full of the same. And, you know, it's been kind of interesting to me to see over the past 24, 48 hours, like all these people talking about what he meant to him, what he meant to them, you know, how much he'll be missed. And I'm like, you know, that's funny because so many people, it seems like that are saying this shit now, a few months ago, were sitting there and knocking jokes on him and being like, hey, you know, Bobby Lashley should be glad he didn't have to work with Magic Bray Wyatt. And I was one of them, to be fair, right? Like, I didn't go so far as to say like, oh, it meant make an excuse, da, 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 da. But there are other people talking about, well, where's Bray Wyatt at now? And he's just, da, 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 and talking about it. he's a head case and, and all this other shit and nobody knowing what was really going on. And that's a very important thing. We learned this lesson a little while back with Keith Lee, too, didn't we? Like, dude almost died and people are talking about where the fuck is he? And, you know, sometimes it's perhaps a powerful reminder of the importance of, be careful what we say if we don't know all of the story, if we don't know what's truly going on, if we don't know what all of the circumstances and considerations are. You know, it's funny to me too is that a lot of these same people that are sitting there and crying their crocodile tears over him and talking about how much they loved him or the ones that would sit there and talk about how often they thought his matches sucked and they thought his character was overdone and they thought his his stuff was getting boring, you know? And it's it's just interest, been interesting to see is what I'll say. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about a young man, and he was a young man. Like, you think about 36, you say, well, he wasn't a kid. Yeah, but in a lot of ways he was. Like, think about that. You know, this guy had plans for a future. He had made good money. And just like that, none of that shit matters. Because he's either going to be buried in a box or have his body in an, his ashes in an urn. And it really, really sucks to have to think about. Just like with Brody Lee a few years ago. Granted, he was a he was a couple of years older, right? But he was still pretty young, and that was really sad and tragic. And it'd be one thing if you sit there and said, you know, for guys like Brody Lee, for guys like Wyndham Rotunda, these were self-inflicted things. These certainly don't feel like self-inflicted things, right? These are less preventable, less controllable type of things. And that makes it the worst. You can't say, well, they went out their way. They went out. No, they really didn't. They had basically had their life taken from them. And it leaves a void. You know, Wyndham Rotunda passing leaves a void in WWE. That's a lot of investment in a character for all those years. And we'll no longer get to see it. It's a lot of emotional investment for fans. And it's just now gone. And, you know, I watched some of the tribute show last night and it was, you know, the whole time you're just sitting there and saying, God, sometimes life sucks. Like, I hate having to see all these tribute shows because people pass. Death is unfortunately a very realistic part of life. 
But I will always respect Wyndham Rotunda for being a guy that was willing to go his own path, that was willing to be different, that was willing to take chances. And sometimes those chances worked out magnificently. And sometimes they didn't. But he still had the courage and confidence to do them. Not everybody does. He believed in himself. He, you could tell he believed in himself even when he knew the Husky Harris character was flat out garbage and was going nowhere. And that company was not going to do anything with him. Like even remember when he was brought up to the main roster and then he went away. Like you thought this was a guy on the fat, fast track to future endeavored and instead... He goes and totally remakes himself, embraces a new character, does things with it, becomes a multiple time world champion. Like this is a dude that made a hell of a career for himself when he could have been dead to rights over a decade ago. That's going to be my lasting memory, the lasting legacy for me when it comes to Wyndham Rotunda. You know, there's these great moments. There were some great matches in there, certainly but a guy that was willing to be different. Like in the modern sense, when you look at guys, I said about Terry Funk, right? Like you look at a professional wrestler, that's a professional wrestler. In the modern sense, when you look at guys and you say, that's a professional wrestler, which is one of the highest compliments that I personally could pay to anybody. I look at Wyndham Rotunda and I say, that, that right there, that's a professional wrestler. That is a wrestler. I don't know if I could pay a higher compliment. There are all types of guys that could talk. There are all types of guys that can flip and do moves in high spots and stuff, right? But there are very few people I look at and I say, my God, that is a professional wrestler. That's what a professional wrestler should be like. Well, that's what they should look like. That's how they should act. Bray Wyatt was a professional wrestler and a really damn good one. And maybe something all of us can take away from this in the future is, you know, appreciating some of these talents more when they're doing things that we say we want. We want uniqueness. We want creativity. We want individuality. We want guys that go against the grain. Well, Wyndham Rotunda bet on himself and he did that and it paid off masterfully for him. I only hope that many of us, all of us in our lives, would have the same confidence, courage, and conviction in ourselves to bet on ourselves and believe in ourselves in the way that he did. Because if we did, perhaps our lives would be much, much better off to do so. I feel terrible for his kids. I feel terrible for JoJo. I feel terrible for the Offerman family. I feel terrible for the Rotunda family. Like, there is nothing good that comes out of this. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Like, he will be remembered. And a lot of us fear, above all else, we fear about death, going to our graves forgotten. And I can say confidently that Wyndham Rotunda Bray Wyatt will never, ever be forgotten. <laughs>